Uh, you know, here's the Southern Baptist Convention. You guys have adjectives more than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> With 30 million American members, they declare that even the desire <coughs> to engage in homosexual relationships is always sinful, impure, degrading, shameful, unnatural, indecent, and perverted. They ran out of adjectives. <laughs> Bless those Southern Baptist hearts. They don't know what they're doing. Seriously. They think they're right. So the minute you despise them or want to be violent against them or, you know, give them the right finger on the right hand, you're not helping anything. You're not helping them. You're not helping yourself. Jesus would say, love those people out of their ignorance. Now, you don't have to like them. That's a big difference. We, we have had more trouble. We've been, I've been in jail more times because of Southern Baptists. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I don't... I got one memory. New Orleans. What's that big stadium? Super, Super Dome. We decided the Southern Baptists are coming. And, you know, they, they have conventions like 50,000. What do they call them? Delegates? <coughs> warriors? Something. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a casket filled with stories of Southern Baptist kids who have written to me, and I've gotten over 100,000 letters since Stranger at the Gate came out, and I've tried to answer every one of them over these since 1994. And we took that place and filled it up with Southern Baptist letters of suffering and death. And we carried, we hired the best jazz band we could find in New Orleans, okay? We got this jazz band, and one of our guys did this thing with a hat, you know, and leading the parade, and this jazz band is playing away, and all these Southern Baptists coming to see, oh, in New Orleans, we get to hear a jazz band. And they all come out and they're pouring out there, and we get to the mic and we say simply, these are the stories of your boys and girls who have killed themselves or who have suffered because of you. All we want to do is deliver these stories into your midst. All we want you to do is read the stories, the consequences of your rhetoric. They wouldn't let us in. So we took it, we went to the door, and the police, and by now, you know, everybody over calls police. They think we're gonna, and we don't. <laughs> One policewoman could handle it all, you know. <laughs> like, oh, they have tons of SWAT teams with guns and everything. It's really exciting when they do that. <laughs> what in the world are they? They have rifles and things. Okay, guys, let's just be calm. One by one, the casket people, carriers, would, would go up to the door and they'd be arrested and someone else would take the casket. Until 180 people had carried that casket and been arrested. And we were loaded in the buses by the sheriff. And you know, police departments are really wonderful. I mean, at, at this point, I'm not talking about, again, the Civil Rights Movement. I'm talking about now. They don't know what to do with this. <coughs> the, the chief of police in Washington, D.C., we always go and ask, tell them what we're going to do. Because it's the surprise thing that, that really upsets the police. They don't know what's going to happen. But we tell them we're going to do this, and we're going to do it right. And we have this amazing reputation with all the police departments in the country that they know when Soul Force comes, it's going to be just the way we said it was going to be. And so he said, he says, I'm a Catholic. Why are you doing this to the Catholics? That was the day we were going after the United States, the American Bishops Association. They meet every year at the Hilton in Washington, D.C. We were going to surround that thing and close down the bishops' meeting. He said, what's wrong with the Catholic Church? I'm one of them. I, we don't. So I read what the Catholics say. Are you ready for this? It makes me want to throw up. Seriously. Um, gays are intrinsically evil and create a culture of evil. They're deplorably dangerous to children, to the family, to the home, and to the military. And they go on like that, on and on, and on and on. There's one billion of them, and that's what the Pope says. He was, Benedict was John Paul ghostwriter about these issues. Benedict is stridently anti-gay. And if the gay priests stop serving communion, 
there would be nobody left. I admit, that's an exaggeration, that's hyperbole. I know there are some straight priests somewhere. <laughs> but I can't say about the, about the Pope and the bishops who live in the Vatican. I mean, would anybody but gay people wear that stuff? <laughs> they even have an overlay of uh, lace. Bless their hearts. <laughs> what age are they still living in? And they go through their seminaries in the U.S. and try to clear out all the gay people. It would be like if all the gay organists quit playing on one Sunday night. <laughs> There'd be silence in Christendom. The gayest place in the, in, in the year is the church organist convention. <laughs> if you're single, pretend you play the organ. <laughs> The Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, with 12 million members, believe that next to the crime of murder comes the sin of sexual impurity. Soul Force was there at Brigham Young University. We've been there three times now with our quality ride. I hear a quality ride came to Huntsville a year or so ago. These kids get trained, and we want you to join them if you're in that age at all. Just consider going, because we're about to do another one, where we train activists for four weeks, and then we put them on the bus for two months, and all your ways are paid, and all you have to do is go out there and risk your life. <laughs> and bring them young, these 35, 40 kids. By the way, we don't just go protest. We spend a year writing to the people we're going to be protesting, trying to get them into dialogue with us, sending them material offering to come there now and talk to them now. You, you don't just protest, you set up a long, long chain of letters and phone calls and emails and telegrams trying to get them to see the error of their ways. And then we start asking, let us on the campus, let us on to bring them in, let us on put on, we have some plays we do, we have some dialogues we create, we have some, we have some wonderful things that can talk to your students. And then when they wouldn't let us, that's when you protest. You don't go away because they say go away. So far, it says, if we're going to do justice for those Mormon kids, we got to be out there and doing it. You can't say, did you see the cartoon, you know, Snoopy, the doll? Yes. <laughs> Peanuts, what's his name, the kid? Okay. He says, Snoopy's out there freezing in the snow, and he's hungry. And, and Charlie Brown says, God bless you. And he walks away. And the little dog says, <laughs> that, that, that's, you know, that's what the, you, you can't say to the Mormons, stop this. You've got to put your body on the line. And at Brigham Young, what we did, did you know Brigham Young has a web page dedicated to only the students from Brigham Young who have killed themselves who were gay? Look it up. Brigham Young Gay Suicides. Page after page after page after page of students who have gone there or were going there when they kill themselves. <laughs> so we took pictures of those same kids, 35, 40 of them, and one by one, we took a lily and the picture onto the grass. I was watching these kids do this. They lay down, they held a lily, and put the picture on top of them in the grass. And then they were arrested and taken away. And then another one came. And then another one came. And then another one came. Do you know Brigham Young changed their policy after our second visit? To anybody who's suspected of being homosexual cannot stay in this school. Now they say, anybody who is a homosexual, we need to talk to you about it. That's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. 